What kind of simulator is this? This is real life, babe. This is real life. This is not a sim? No. excited I am right now. Fucking get some of that. I like that. Whoa, I like that. You like that? Fucker? I like that. <laughs> I'm getting shit in my face. There was someone underneath. Guy. Hi. What's up? Good morning, by the way. <laughs> I didn't even realize that was happening. Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Yes, yet another episode. We are, hi, hey Tyler. We're out here in Illinois at uh, Autobahn. So this is kind of like a private country club type of track. I've actually been here before, probably 10 years ago actually shooting Time Attack. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. We are giving you the chance to win Boom House starting today. For every single dollar that's spent today, Tuesday the 14th, gets you twice the entries into the giveaway. And another thing, every single dollar you spend at Carcane Supply gets you entered in to win. I bet you didn't even know we had a parts company. Now, does that sound ridiculous? Absolutely. Do you want to be the chop king of your neighborhood? Head on over to hoonigan.com slash giveaway for more information. Today, we're going to feature a car that I've had a chance to follow for many, many years. And this car, you guys know, if you guys are big fans of Hoonigan, you guys have seen this car. It's the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Literal. Mr. Manline himself, who honestly, you kind of like set the standard for the Manline at the Hoonigan garage. It can never be redone because that place doesn't exist anymore. I know it's unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate because there's a big dispute going on over another local who you guys want to deem your champ, but that's fine. But yeah. unfortunately, we can't make it an official thing, but maybe one day, somehow, some way, somehow, something could happen. What I like about you is you kind of bring that style to drifting. Full throttle. All, all the way, backers entry. Like. Good looking car, good uh, stance, right? Good fitment. Just, just it, it's, it's like the culture aspect of it that I love that you've kind of kept because you still have your comp car that you'll compete in, yep. right? That's yep. the Cora Works 350Z, yep. right? Yep. But then you still have your personal car 
that's still kind of true to heart, uh, not V8, it's still RB. Yeah. And it, it's just something that I've, I guess you've developed over time, right? This, this thing is like, it, 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 it's like uh, famous in the drift world because of the way you drive, not because it's an S14 and it looks cool. It's, it's just like the way you drive. If you watch this video, I believe it's called Hashira, and it's with um, Fumiyaki Kamatsu and the Signal Auto guys, and it's like a real OG video. But he goes through and his cars were like super similar, where they're on three-piece wheels, real paint, like die cut vinyl, like not overdone. This is kind of like a little more on the aggressive side, but that's kind of more my personality and how I like my cars. But his rule number one is car has to look good. And two, you have to drive it good, you know? So for me, it's always just putting your heart into it, you know? And so for me, I always grew up watching videos like that. And when the D1 guys would come over, their cars always looked immaculate. They always had the best paint jobs the best liveries. They were always door to door. Like Kazama is my all time favorite. Oh my God. He's my all time favorite. We're about to fanboy right now. Like his green S50. Yeah, green. Back in 2006 at our window speedway when he did uh, the rodeo drifting. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time seeing rodeo drifting. And when I had a chance to take pictures of him doing that, I just, it kind of changed my life forever, honestly. Just watching his driving style in general, he was just always so aggressive, super stylish, always throwing it out there. Like he was in it to win it. And anything that he needed to do to do it, he would do it. And that's always what I've tried to incorporate into my style of driving is just always giving 110%. All right, so you guys who watch Autofocus know that I always love kind of referring to the past uh, Ryan and I actually, we've known each other for, I don't even know how many years now, since- Over, over 10. Yeah, so I think- When you 2007. were 18. Yeah. No, you were 18. Yep, yep. Uh, when I met you and barely had a, barely started driving, but yeah. already knew how to drift. I actually was brought in to be a course worker and another driver got sick. And I drove an R33 at the time and they wanted a full field of drivers and there was an R32 that nobody could drive. And I was able to get in there and drive it and I wound up getting top eight and he just kept inviting me back. Right, so, okay. So, and I wasn't pro yeah, or the, anything. The, the, <laughs> our history is um, we used to go to these events in China. I, I really like my uh, Corolla. Never driven a Corolla before, especially one with power. So, it's rad. <laughs> My part was, you know, to bring a little bit of the media side, but also to kind of bring the American drivers and not really take care of them, but just that that was our crew, you know? Yeah. It was like Team USA going over to China to compete against the Chinese, to compete against the Japanese, yeah. to compete against even the French and like just pretty much all over the world yeah. gathering in different parts of China to drift. Uh, it was just something special and it was just something different. And it, it was kind of cool to, to watch you compete in that series. Yeah. But now over this many years, actually honestly to watch you grow as a driver, as a business person, and also just your program, right? So like you had your 33, which I had a chance to see it recently. It was like, yeah. a, it was like a, it's like a bare shell now. Yes. And, and I think that was, the f one of the first R33s I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I drove that and I drifted it, I dailied it. It was, uh, it was a really fun car and uh, I'm glad to see that the car is still around. Uh, I believe uh, it's a guy, he's a European driver, I believe, and it's got a 2JZ in it now and rear mount and it's all brought up to, to current standards, but that car's still around, man, it's pretty cool. The funny thing is, it still has the same stickers. Yeah, you know, like that. they didn't I take off all, any of the stickers. So like on the windshield and everything, it's all like these old stickers, I think including um, one of John Chase's. Like it's got destroyer. a destroyer sticker yeah, yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. Yep. So it's got a zip tied sticker on there. I, I, I want to say I might have the I'm killing it on it window. I might stare. <laughs> that was that was a shift block dot. Now it's an old forum. Yeah. But yeah, we're old. <laughs> now, now we're old. Back then we were young, but Really, honestly, it's been such a pleasure to kind of watch you over these years competing in Formula Drift and also these culture events like Grid Life. So, yeah, that's the thing. We're here at Grid Life. Yep. It's not a festival. It's a track battle. And we are facilitating a, um, 
a drift sessions in between the track battles, essentially. And uh, it's very, uh, we're honored and, and very thankful for Good Life for, for bringing us out to get some track time out here to, to intermix with the uh, with their track battle series. All right, so let's kind of go over this S14. Sure. This uh, has had many iterations, many liveries. Of course, the centerpiece of this is the wonderful sounding RB25. Is it still 2.5 liter? It is, a, it's standard stroke, standard bore. It's a uh, RB25 Neo, so solid lifter. Um, it's, uh, it's been heavily worked in, in terms of machine work. Um, it's got Tomei rods, it's got Carrillo, CP Carrillo pistons, it's got Tomei pond cams, it's got Ferreira valves, springs and retainers. It's got these super rare Gretti adjustable cam gears, adjustable intake cam gears. They don't make these anymore. They're extremely hard to find. Um, it's got a plasma man, uh, custom intake manifold. It's got a full race twin scroll turbo manifold. Oh my God, that is, I love it's that It's a work so of much. art. It really is a work of oh, art. Oh yeah. Those guys make some amazing things. Yeah, Jeff's a good friend of mine and he's, uh, he's done a lot of really cool stuff with his business and the industry. It's got a Borg Warner 8474D Black Series. It's got twin tile 44 millimeter MVR wastegates. It's got a Plasma Man uh, in, uh, intercooler core, uh, J-Town Fab. Intercooler piping, exhaust, um, it's got radium, fuel pressure regulator, it's got ID 2200cc injectors, it's got three Wobble 450 fuel pumps. So in terms of build, like how, how much of it have you built by, with your hands on this thing? Um, Pretty much every, everything. You've done everything. Me and my friends, yeah. Me and my friends that I've been working with for seven, eight years, we, we've built everything on this car. That's pretty incredible. Andrew built the short block, Arlington Machine built the head. Um, we assembled everything. Uh, we did all the plumbing. Uh, Jose did all the paint work. Sergio did all the, the tube work. Um, yeah, suspension setup, all of that, it's I all mean, us. The, the thing is like, this is built for these sort of events, right? It's not like it to any regulation. I you mean, just it, kind of built it for yourself. Pretty much. I mean, it, it was a pro car at one time until I, I teamed up and, and we started running the Z. You know, we did some modifications that aren't necessarily FD legal. There, there are, are there things that could be reversed? Sure. Uh, I don't think I would necessarily do that. If I were to do something with a platform like this, I would probably build another chassis from that point. This car is what I got my pro license in. It's what I did pro two in. It's what I got into pro one with. It's what I did grid life with. It's what I did the man line with. This car, it's what I had first time I've been to SEMA with. It's been to SEMA twice in Central Hall, you know, front and center. This is a, this is a big staple to me in my career. And it's just, to me, it's the, the funnest car to drive. Like, I just love driving it. It's so interesting to me because uh, there was one point in time when drift cars were kind of like throwaway cars, you know? Yeah. Like you would just run it for a little bit until you wrecked it and then you move on. Yeah. It, it's so cool that this has basically gone through so many different versions, but it's still surviving and it's still good. It's still- It's part of the family. Yeah, it, it, this is probably like the lifer car for you, right? Oh, wow. I don't think you would get rid of this thing. You can't really put a price on it. I mean, I mean, yeah, could I build another one for a dollar figure? Sure, but it, you know, the memories and the road trips, like even coming out here, we just had the best time coming out here. It's just always me and my boys. And I mean, we're serious about what we do you know, but it's it's always about the adventure to get somewhere. And it's always been a good time with this car for the most part. Last year, she she fought back quite a bit, but she's always been able to pull through for me one way or the other to do what she's needed to do. And yeah, that's what's rad. We, we uh, had a chance to check it out when I actually hosted a Canon event when we actually launched the 90D uh, camera at, in Atlanta. You actually brought this out as well as the 350Z and it was really interesting because all of these camera journalists never seen drifting before. And of course they get like a very good intro to drifting by yes. <laughs> being able to shoot you uh, tearing it up in this thing. It was a good, it was a good opportunity. So I, I actually blew the motor then and then I had to rebuild it two days later for good life. And we made it happen, luckily. Of course, as always, <laughs> made it happen. All right, so um, let's, let's do a little more walk around and let's check out the rest of the car. The livery is so cool. 
I mean, so the livery actually is kind of based off of your logo, right? A little bit, a little bit, yeah. So Factory 83 Ian, he's, uh, he's been a longtime friend of mine. He's designed a lot of stuff for me. And uh, he just, you know, every year we try to we try to pick up the ante. I enjoyed this one so much, and I think it's a big staple for Power Stop Brakes as well as myself that we decided to go with it another year. And uh, we kind of made some small iterations, like in the back bumper, it's got some some small style cues that are a little bit different. A couple different partners that hopped on board, but for the main part, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into this. This is five and a half pounds of actual metal flake. Oh wow! This is Paint Huffer Ruby Red. What, why is it called Paint Huffer? That's their name. <laughs> okay, all right. I kind of feel like. All right, all right. Okay, I'll take it. Paint yeah, Huffer, right? Yeah. yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty but, cool but guys. This is actual metal. It's metal flake, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, this isn't, there isn't, you know, it's it's got like a like a red base and then it's just, it's all flake and clear. So this is about four coats of clear and there's about six coats of clear on the roof. And then Jose just goes through and does his, this is all airbrushed. This is like, oh, and this is airbrushed. Dude. Yeah, it's airbrushed. Dude. Oh my God, your logo. Yeah. So cool. It's lit. So it's uh, just forever. <laughs> this is so cool. So that's what's cool about it. You know, with vinyl, you got to repair it every year and change it up, but like, this literally left the SEMA sh showroom floor and it it's still beautiful. It looks incredible. And I see you just redid the bumper. Like, we just redid, yeah. We there's like a, a flake kind of like, uh, it, it's like a flake uh, a gradient. Yeah, it's like a reverse gradient yeah. to the to the roof. I like that, that's really cool. All right, so uh, in terms of your main sponsor, PowerStop, it's kind of interesting because drift cars usually don't have brakes. But they really should because with good brakes comes a lot of confidence. And the more confident you are as a driver, the harder you're gonna be able to push. So what I love about running the power stop brakes is that I'm always, I like the left foot and I really like to control every corner of the car. And when I'm, I know that I have confidence when I put my foot down on the brake pedal. It's just always there. Plus when we're at these events like Grid Life, especially when we're at Road Atlanta, when you're hot lapping, Man. Oh yeah. How fast are you going down the front straight? You know, that's the difference between when you're doing events like Grid Life as opposed to FD. FD is a little bit more controlled as, as opposed to Grid Life is a little bit more freestyle. Like at Grid Life Road Atlanta, we're doing full track. We're entering it at over 130 miles an hour. So now braking now becomes a major component of that. And FD, you know, we do get up to triple digit speeds and uh, braking is just as important there as it is there. Just our speeds can be increased a little bit higher here. Yeah, but the difference between that and Atlanta is you could hot lap it. And you do lap after lap after yeah. lap of yeah. 130 mile per hour entries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, need, you need to make sure your equipment's on yeah. point. It's, it's crazy w w when there's a line of cars yeah. and they're waiting to go, but you just skip that line and you're already going fast. Pro line, baby. And then, <laughs> and then you floor it. I mean, because that straightaway, I mean, people could hit 200 easily if they have the power, right? Yeah. I mean, there's some serious race cars that go to Road Atlanta. Yeah. It's like the fastest cars, you got Radicals, you have, what, you have Le Mans, you have, or Petit Le Mans. Yeah. I've seen some really crazy cars go out there and test, so. So let's talk about the wheels then. So these are my own signature line of wheels uh, with my collaboration with Heritage Wheel. Sorry, a little bit, we just gave her a little 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 rinse off of where he got her in the trailer but these are a true three-piece wheel everything is made in the u.s the centers are cut in the u.s the barrels are made in the u.s um, and then we have this massive uh 370z nismo uh bolt-on brake kit available from power stop so it utilizes a, a custom adapter bracket and uh, this is the exact same setup that we have on our fd car as well wait so this is your own wheel this is my own wheel yeah that's that, that kind I of a, some flex there sir yeah, it was something cool. I mean, if anybody wanted to ever purchase them, you can purchase these as well, but it's more just, uh, yeah. It's just, that's pretty cool. More, that's how you more, keep the fitment signature. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's check out the rear of the car. So this is kind of an area where it differentiates so much between drift cars, Yeah. right? I mean, when, when people started moving cooling to the back, that's when it's like, all right, now what do you do? You know? Now it's kind of like implementing off-road and rally cars with circuit style cars, right? And now you're taking into consideration, especially with having an inline six, such a massive engine into a, such a compact engine compartment, you're really minimized with your cooling capacity. Inline sixes love to run hot. Any high horsepower application likes to run hot. So you wanna get the biggest inner or radiator core that you can get with big massive water lines. So the more coolant, 
more surface area that your radiator has to, to cool down, the cooler your car is gonna run. So this utilizes a 31 by 19 inch triple pass radiator. It's nothing special, I got it off at of Jags. It's just a universal 31 by 19 inch triple pass. It's got two buff uh, 12 inch high performance spall paddle blade fans, dash 16 lines from the back all the way up to the block. So the air just comes over this. Yeah, it's get ducted down into theory and then escapes down. So tell, uh, and then tell me about the suspension here. You got the fuel suspension. Yeah, 442. So we have two ways in the back. We have one way adjustables in the, in the front. Uh, drifting, more emphasis is done with suspension tuning in the rear than it is the front. Um, excellent coilover. Again, I've, I've been friends with Odie for a very long time now, and uh, I wouldn't trust anyone more to, with, my, with my footwork than Odie. And then it's also paired with uh, Wisefab suspension front and rear. So we have the ultimate control for, uh, for footwork. Can we, let's check out the interior. Sure. Oh, this is where the magic happens. This is the office. This is the office. So and you got Mr. Uh, Greg's uh, world famous. That's my boy. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's a um, great guy. Oh my God, this is so cool. Yeah. What? So this is all airbrushed? It's all airbrushed. So you airbrushed all of this before even putting it in? Yeah. So this is, this is my, my signature series, Get NRG Steering Wheel. I've been partnered with them for about five years now. They're great friends of mine. This is our second signature collaborative edition steering wheel uh, that is also available for purchase. It's 350 millimeter deep corn. It's got custom engravings, right? Custom logo, Alcantara, triple stitched, triple color weighed. I like this. It's pretty dope, it's right? It's like the Rasta colors. It's the little homage to our, to our boy Ross. <laughs> And uh, these are the Sawbell X pads. These are brand new for, or they, they came out last year with paired with their, uh, their Hans FIA harnesses. It's got pretty extensive roll cage. It's got a mid valley NASCAR four speed transmission, custom hydro, which I believe is some part shop max, fire suppression system. So uh, what do you do for a rear end? R32. Oh, it's just the R32 one. R32 Skyline GTR, which is a 32 spline axle, six bolt flange, cause two way. Oh, two way, okay. Yeah. And then what about in engine management? Engine management, we're utilizing a Haltech Elite 2500 series. Oh, the, I, I just put a Haltech in my 240Z, so. Yeah, bringing it up, you know, updating it to, to like the that. modern age. I love that car. Yeah. I got some speakers back here too, by the way. Oh, what? This there is a party go. car though. Oh, it's all the way. All the way Wait, how do you play, how do you play My tunes phone. on this? Oh. <laughs> so it's got an amp, it's got an amp behind your seat and it's got a little aux cord that I put into my phone and that's my head unit right there. Your jams, man, yeah, your man. jams. This is all fun and games talking about the car, but this weekend when you actually drive. Oh, we're gonna throw down. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be ready, I'm ready. My body's ready. So you're gonna give me a ride or what? You already know it. Oh, I can't wait. All right, let's do it. Hell yeah, let's get to it. It just feels so good to be out so here. Good. Man, God, look at Ryan. Dude, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm, so I'm happy for you. So this is the first event of the year for you, right? First event of the year. I haven't driven this since December, Desert Mayhon last year, right after SEMA. Yeah, it's just. So, wait, you, so you're driving in real life now, but that's what you're saying. Yes, yes. Sim driving is close, but it's not... Um, how close do you want to be? I need to be close. I want to be... <laughs> I want to be inside of you. I want to be inside.
dude, you just, you just gave me a ride. Like, that was a ride. <laughs> it was rad. That was rad. It was rad. So a couple things that kind of surprised me about this car right off the bat, like on your warm up lap, it, it was almost like you were road racing. Yeah, I just wanted, I don't know, I just wanted to kind of get a better feel for the car. I wanted to give you a better feel for the car. Just kind of warm everything in. It, it surprised me how much power and how much traction you actually had. Yeah. Like in the back when you just whomped on it, what gear was that? Like third gear to just, you, you were like just accelerating. Yeah, third and fourth. But that was the back was fourth. Dude, it surprised so the heck out of me how much traction you actually had to put down yeah. to, to have like just that forward push. I mean, I thought in a drift car, you would just anytime, any gear, you womp on it and it would just spin. No, but you actually had power. You, you need power and you need traction to be able to stay on the track with making as much power and going as fast as we are. So having quality suspension like Feel 442 coilovers um, and of course GT Radial SX2s, they're fantastic for what we're doing down here. This car I'm making right now with the level that we're at, we're probably around 740, 750 wheel horsepower. And uh, yeah, she, I mean, she scoots. No, and also the run that I had a chance to ride with you on that, uh, you actually turned up the boost for that, huh? Yeah, just, uh, just one click. <laughs> so just we went from click. like 710 it, to 750. It, it starts with just one click. Yeah, yeah. we got Seven. one more. 710, 750. 750 and then 785, 790. That's the that's the high end. Full to, to the wheels. Yeah, to the ground on a Dynapack. Oh yeah. my God. So you could take, I mean, it all depends. It's fast. Yeah, yeah. it's really fast. Yeah. It sounds amazing too. Oh yeah. my God. With the Haltech. It's crazy. And then Andrew's got that. It's crazy that it's still 2.5 liter. Yeah, yep. Oh, yep. Amazing. Stock stroke, stock war. It's not ported crazy, just really solid lower end those are drop-in cams big turbo sick yep thank you so yep. much yeah thank you that was awesome larry get in 800 horsepower s14 just taking me around that was yep. awesome very cool